Welcome to week two of NCRP 507. The purpose of research and negotiation, conflict resolution, and peace building is usually to improve the process. Ethical research in NCRP deals with conforming to the research standards of the community of practitioners. Many professional organizations, such as the American Psychological Association, the American Educational Research Association, and the American Sociological Association, has standards of research practice. Often in NCRP, a lot of the research information comes from researcher practitioners. It leads to the question, can a mediator or negotiator simultaneously attend to the conflict resolution process and collect research data? Some of the key ethical issues related to NCRP are consent to research, challenges when dealing with human behavior, anonymous responses, disclosing limitations, sensitive nature of conflicts, the impact of skewing results, and not giving appropriate credit to the researchers. One of the things you need to do if you're going to do any government funded or university approved research involving human subjects is complete the National Institute of Health's Free Protecting Human Subjects Participants course. It is a free course and I've completed it about a half dozen times. I learn something new every time I take the course. I will have a discussion thread asking you how the NIH protecting human research subjects applies to NCRP and you need to include the certificate in your mini portfolio for this course. The NIH course goes through many of the ethical issues and is required to get approved by any instructional re review board research through CSUDH. In this course, you must register, take the NIH course, and post your certificate in the assignment link. If you have already taken it and have a certificate, you don't need to repeat it. The American Sociological Association has a component of integrity in their code of ethic that applies to NCRP research practitioners. It is similar to the Hippocratic Oath physicians must take when they will do no harm to their patients. Confidentiality. The researcher can identify a client's behavior communications during the NCRP processes without identifying the client names, locations, and other identifying information should be stripped from the research data. Uh, during NCRP processes, clients often brainstorm ideas that are not practical. Some clients disclose embarrassing information. Mediators and negotiators must refer to ground rules when inflammatory language or profanity is used. The researcher should include the details about the conflict without identifying the client. Exceptions to these confidentiality clauses are such things as reporting child abuse if there's threats um, during the mediation process. And sometimes these confidentiality clauses in the mediation agreement forms uh, allow the use of information for training or research. The American Psychological Association provides guidelines for informed consent which includes providing the purpose of the research, expected duration and procedures. Second, the participants right to decline to participate and to withdraw from research once participation has begun, the foreseeable consequences of declining or withdrawing from the research, reasonable foreseeable factors that may be expected to influence their willingness to participate, such as potential risk, discomfort, or adverse effects, any prospective research benefits, limits of confidentiality, incentives for participation, and 
whom to contact for questions about research and research participants' rights. Furthermore, the APA mandates researchers to provide an opportunity for the per prospective participants to ask questions and receive answers about the research. The NIH goes through most of the human factors issues related to research. In NCRP, we must be careful about performing research using bad faith or dirty negotiation tactics just to see how it will impact the outcomes. We don't change variables that may adversely affect negotiated outcomes just to see a difference between the control and experimental variable outside of a laboratory. Clients are anonymous when the researcher cannot match a response with a client. An example is when clients complete post-mediation satisfaction surveys without their name or any identifying information. It is difficult to monitor which clients participated or did not participate in anonymous research. As a researcher, you should disclose any limitations to your research. Nata and Kluwer identify the challenge of sensitivity, which I believe applies to all NCRP research methods. People are often reluctant to participate in research about conflict because of the sensitive nature. The problems include the sensitivity people have to discussing the negative consequences of their conflict. In one mediation that I had, a businessman who is also an elected city official had started a relationship over the internet. The man and woman met and there was a condom malfunction which led to medical problems for the female. She had both medical expenses and had to take unpaid time off of her work. The man didn't believe the medical bills or the time off of her work was any of his responsibility and he terminated their relationship. Her total expenses were approximately $4,000 so it was referred from small claims court to mediation because neither party wanted to discuss their conflict in an open courtroom. I have given enough information to show the sensitive nature of the case. Both parties agreed to the mediation consent form which included a confidentiality clause allowing for use of the case information for training purposes. NCRP researchers must respect their clients' rights, dignity, and diversity. As I started this lecture, many professions have code of research ethics. In NCRP, we must follow research ethics that maintains confidentiality, sensitivity of clients, and anonymity. Our research ethics would differ from professions like journalism where the purpose is to broadcast the results or law where legal research is used in public trials. In NCRP our research is used to improve practice and discover methods of impartially resolving complex conflicts. The class discussion for this section on research focuses on the article The Shadow Scholar written by an author who uses the pseudonym of Ed Dante. I look forward to reading your responses about the ethical integrity of Mr. Dante and his clients.